You're Only Old Once by Dr. Seuss, read by Grandpa Tom. One day you will read in the National Geographic of a faraway land with no smelly bad traffic. In those green pastured mountains of Fadafazi, everyone feels fine at a hundred and three, cause the air that they breathe is potassium free, and because they chew nuts from the Tutatut tree. This gives strength to their teeth, it gives length to their hair, and they live without doctors with nary a care. And you'll find yourself wishing that you were out there in Fadafazi and not here in this chair, in the Golden Years Clinic on Century Square for spleen readjustment and muffler repair. Just why are you here? You're not feeling your best. You've come in for an eyesight and solvency test. And if you're the type that gets finicky finick, at this point you'll try to get out of that clinic. But they will outwit you as quick as a winnick. The quiz docs will catch you. They'll start questionnairing. They'll ask you point blank how your parts are all faring. And your grandfather's parts. And please try to recall if your grandma hurt most in the spring or the fall. Did your cousins have dreadful wild nightmares at night? Did they suffer such ailments as bus driver's blight, chimney sweep stupor, or prune picker's plight? And describe the main cause of your uncle's collapse. Too much alphabet soup or martinis, perhaps? And the next thing you know, when you finish that test, is somehow you've lost both your necktie and vest, and an ogler is ogling your stomach and chest. Your escape plans have melted, you haven't a chance. For the next thing you know, both your socks and your pants, and your drawers and your shoes, have been lost for the day. The oglers have blossomed like roses in May, and silently, grimly, they ogle away. What those oglers have learned, they're not ready to tell. Clinicians don't spout their opinions pell-mell, so you're back with the vestible fish for a spell. Norval won't bring you much comfort, you know, but he's quite sympathetic, as clinic fish go. There you'll sit for several hours, growing tenser each second, fearing your fate will be worse than you reckoned, till finally, Miss Becker, your beckoner beckons. To a booth where the world-renowned earman von Crandall has perfected a test known as bellows and candle. If the wind from the bellows can't blow out the flame, you failed, and you're going to be sorry you came. You'll be told that your hearing's so murky and muddy, your case calls for special intensified study. They'll test you with noises from far and from near, and you'll get a black mark for the ones you can't hear. Then they'll say, my dear fellow, you're deafer than most, but there's hope since you're not quite as deaf as a post. We'll study your symptoms, we'll give you a call. In the meantime, go back and sit down in the hall. So you'll find yourself talking to Norval once more, and Norval will think that you're a bit of a bore, because Norval has heard the same stories before. To this fish you'll become a plain pain in the neck, while you wait once again for Miss Becker to beck. But Miss Becker won't come, with great swish and great swank, a wheelchair will come. You've gained status and rank. And Weldon the wheeler will say with great pride, You're disqualified, sir. You are now certified. As a VIP case, you're entitled to ride. Through thin and through thick, I'll be at your backside. Dear Weldon will show you great sights as you go. Right now you are riding down stethoscope row. And I know that like all of our top patients, you're hoping to get yourself stuffed with some fine class scoping. So I'm sure you'll be simply delighted to hear that in the Internal Organs Olympics last year, Dr. Schmidt, Schmoot, Sinatra, Sylvester, and Fons won 15 gold medals, 9 silver, 6 bronze. For the moment, however, we'll bypass this bunch. There's plenty of time to see them after lunch. You must see Dr. Pollen, our allergy whiz, who knows every sniffle and itch that there is. 
Dr. Pollen will find as he works on your case. If the face powder is wrong on your stepsister's face, he will check your reactions to thumbtacks and glue, catcher's mitts, leaf mold, and cardigans too, nasteriums and marble cake white and blue chalks, and thoracic coal and the feathers of hawks. Also corn on the cob, also buffalo grease, and how you react when you're stared at by geese. He'll take copious notes, then I'll hazard a guess that he'll send you downstairs to see Dr. Van Ness. Van Ness has enjoyed a high rate of success in his pioneer work in the study of stress, so you can be sure he will stress you a trifle, then he'll send you around to see Dr. Von Eiffel. Dietitian Von Eiffel controls the woof woofer, our diet devising computerized sniffer, on which you would just simply lie down in repose and sniff at good food as it goes past your nose. From caviar souffle to caribou roast, from pemmican patties to terrapin toast, he'll find out by sniff can the foods you like most. And when that guy finds out what you like, you can bet it won't be on your diet. From here on, forget it. Then into the new wing, we'll see Dr. Spreckles, who does the three Fs, footsies, fungus, and freckles. And nextly, we'll drop in on young Dr. Jins, our ANS man who does anthrums and shins. And of course, he'll refer us to Dr. McGrew, McGuire and McPherson and Blinn and Baloo, and Timkins and Tompkins and Diller and Drew, Fitzsimmons, Fitzgerald, and Fitzpatrick, too, all of whom will prescribe a prescription for you. For your pill drill, you'll go to room 663, where a voice will instruct you, repeat after me. The small white pill is what I munch at breakfast and right after lunch. I take the pill that's Kelly Green before each meal and in between. These Loganberry colored pills I take for early morning chills. I take the pill with zebra stripes to cure my early evening gripes. These orange tinted ones, of course, I take to cure my Charlie horse. I take three blues at half past eight to slow my exhalation rate. On alternate nights at 9 p.m., I swallow pinkies, four of them. The reds which make my eyebrows strong, I eat like popcorn all day long. The speckled browns are what I keep beside my bed to help me sleep. This long flat one is what I take if I should die before I wake. When at last we are sure you've been properly pilled, then a few paper forms must be properly filled, so that you and your heirs may be properly billed. Whereupon, if you're smart, there's a very good chance that you'll soon meet again with your socks, coat, and pants. And you'll know once your necktie's back under your chin, and Norval has waved you Godspeed with his fin, you're in pretty good shape for the shape you were in. The end.